Hey, is want to discover literary marvels such as A Death in Sweden? Or what about Tempting, a best-selling erotica novel? Or maybe, just maybe, you are looking for love and purpose in your life. Check out my blog at frederickby.com. That's frederickby, like bye-bye, dot com. But for now, enjoy the show. Everyone, hello, come on in, relax, sit back, and thank you for pushing the download button. I am Frederic B, and I'm talking to you from right here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. You are listening to the Book Geek Unchained, home to literary marvels, those you know and those you do not know. I am a guy, I am a dude, I am a geek, I am a bookworm, I love stories, I love creativity, I am a writer, I am a host, I'm a friend, I'm a partner, I am an animal lover. This podcast is about fiction and non-fiction books that we love. Books change our lives, right? Books entertain us. Books make us grow. Basically, it is a live podcast. It is free every time you download it on iTunes. Please go over there. And subscribe, subscribe. It is uh, listener supported. So the way that we can do that is tell a friend, leave a review. People, leave a review, leave reviews on iTunes or for more podcasts, free gifts, Q and A's, articles. Subscribe at www.frederickby.com. You can also join me on Twitter at by Fred on Facebook. Simply type in my name, Frederick By, and check out my YouTube channel, The Book Geek. For previous episodes. Hey guys, I want to give thanks to radioguestlist.com where you can find people to interview for free. That's right, radioguestlist.com. You can actually be contacted by people to interview. You want to converse with people? You have a subject you want to talk about? Go there, radio, radio guest list. Dot com um, and uh, thank you guys for your support um all you listeners hey I want to hear from you I w- if you would like to be on the show if you would like to be on the book geek unchained show to discuss a book you've written or that you loved if you have a book recommendation or you just want to chat email me at info at com. That's info at frederickby.com. And for advertisement offers, use the same address with subject advertising. Guys, today we have an amazing show. We are going to be joined by a, a passionate reader, a passionate writer. Um, and I can't wait to introduce her to you. Actually, she's, um, you're gonna, you're gonna love this book. If you love suspense, this is your show. Um, right before starting, as many of you know, I like to start off with something funny. And this is about an engineer and God. An engineer dies and goes to hell. He's hot and miserable. So he, so he decides to take action. The AC has been busted for a long time, so he fixes it. Things cool down quickly. The moving walkway motor jammed, so he unjams it. People can get from place to place more easily. The TV was grainy and unclear, so he fixes the connection to the satellite dish. And now they get hundreds of high-def channels, although they still cannot watch Breaking Bad on AMC. One day, God decides to look down on hell to see how his grand design is working out and notices that everyone is happy and enjoying umbrella drink drinks. He asks the devil, what's up? The devil says, things are great down here since you sent us an engineer. What? Says God, an engineer? I didn't send you one of those. That must have been a, mis- a mistake. Send him upstairs immediately. The devil responds, no way. We want to keep our engineer. We like him. God demands, 
If you don't send him to me immediately, I'll sue. The devil, the devil laughs and says, God, you live in heaven. Where are you going to get a lawyer? <laughs> All right, I like that one. Hey, last week I took a shot at the managers, but you know, I, there, are, there are good managers, you know, and this week I kind of took a little shot. The joke, actually, not me, <laughs> took a little shot at, the, at lawyers, but hey, I have friends who are lawyers and, you know, they're good people. I, you know, I, I like them. Anyway, <laughs> um, hey, do you love suspense novels? Today, we chat with an avid reader writer and fellow nino rhymoer if you, if you don't know what a nino rhymoer is is simply someone who writes novels for the fun of it and challenge of it she talks about her latest discovery she's a an uh, 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 i mean she she's somebody who's really a referral for i guess you know um uh, great great books actually great novels and we're going to talk about the whisperer by donato Carisi, get ready to fall in love with a new story. Uh, right before we go, we go there. Just want to wish you all a merry Christmas. A merry, Christ- I am. I like Christmas. You know, personally, I know uh, many people don't don't like Christmas. <laughs> they hate it, and um, and you know, everybody has their own reasons. Um, but for me, uh, next week actually, you'll be joined. I'll join you from Guadeloupe in the Caribbean. I don't want to sound like uh you know, uh, an arrogant, uh, you know, prick or whatever, <laughs> but, um, I just, I'm going to be joined. I'm going to be in, 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 at a hot, in a hot temperature. I'm going to be sitting on a beach and I'm going to be thinking about you guys and thinking about this podcast and my novels that should be out in March. So, um, that's all, that's all for me today. So let's get to the conversation right after this. Hey guys, check out this week's blog with great reviews for her latest novel, uh, Beauty of the Beast. Victoria Foss's work has been labeled captivating, a fantastic story, and a five-star page turner. In this in-depth two-part interview, author Victoria Faust opens up about the creation of her vampire novel, her fascinating life story in Croatia, and more. Go now, frederickbay.com, for more Q&As with number one best-selling authors such as Kevin Wignall and Alex Lucian. That's frederickbay.com. Okay, so yeah, so basically the the the, the way it's gonna go, it's really uh, like I said uh, to you, it's a conversation, very simple. We talk as if we were at the second cup, <laughs> you know, <laughs> writing whatever, <laughs> no and and that's it. And then it's the you know the questions there that uh, I sent you. So uh, just you know, feel f- respond uh, naturally, and uh, and that's it. There's no pressure or anything. <laughs> okay. All right. So can you summarize the the book? Like, uh, cause you, so, cause you suggested to me the whisper by Donato Carisi, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I checked it out on uh, Amazon. I read the, 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 um, the synopsis and, uh, it's actually a thriller, right? Exactly. And what is it? What is it about? So exactly what happened is that, um, the police was called on a site where they discovered, uh, five, severed arms uh, so they find out that those arms belong to uh, five five little girls from 8 to 18 years old that have disappeared uh, they've been looking for those girls since many months uh, it's been going on since a while and they find out also a sixth one but they don't know who it belongs to uh, so there is a sixth girl that we don't know who she is. Uh, of course, she's been kidnapped. And so there is this police officer, Mila Vasquez, that is called to help them find out what happened. Uh, she specialized in kidnapping and she, she has kind of an history uh, related to that, which you discover through the book. 
actually she has a past of kidnapping and she knows a lot about how a killer works and her, her specialty actually is to find those girls before they are actually killed mm-hmm. so she's called on this site to find out what happened and if she could save one of those girls because we don't know if they are dead yet mm-hmm. so this is this is uh, really what it's about and each time they are on the track of someone actually they find someone they discover actually something bigger something more insane mm-hmm. and crew like what like, like can you give us an example uh for example uh the first the first the first person actually uh, as soon as the book starts uh they think they are on the right track they f- they know for sure that it must be this guy and so they they try to look for him but when they discover him actually the guy is dead uh there is a bigger crime behind that. So they discover a bigger murder there. Mm-hmm. And that leads them to another track, actually, another murderer, and so on and so on. So you discover uh, many more murder, and they think that actually are, there is someone at the top of them all that is giving them order, that is whispering them orders, which hmm. is where the name The Whisperer comes from, because there is someone actually that is evil that is telling them to do this. Um, and so, in a way, you also discover that all the characters are kind of linked to those murders, so everyone is a suspect. In the- hmm. So this is really interesting, <laughs> really. Well, and, and okay, so because I asked you what was your favorite book, and you chose that one. What was the thing that really enlightened you about the book? This is a book that you can you cannot put down. I mean, this is a page turner. Uh, I love that. This is the kind of book I was looking for since a long time. So when I found it, uh, I would read it. I couldn't go to bed. I couldn't sleep because I was always <laughs> thinking about this book. It would freak me out. Uh, it was really scary. So it had everything to uh to keep you in that book and want to read it more and more and more you don't want to stop at the end it's almost like you keep the last hundred page and and you're like no i i cannot go on i cannot continue because if i do so the book will end (laughs) and i won't have anything else to read and so this is the kind of book i really like and this is the kind of book you put down and you're like okay now what do i do with my life now what do i read (laughs) (laughs) and it's hard after that the recovery is kind of hard after those kind of books (laughs) yeah no i get that i get i get your feeling geez i felt i felt i felt that way for a lot of books um and okay, so how did you experience the book? Okay, so now you just say, okay, you can put it down. But in the beginning, is it is it like a slow build, a slow build? You know, were you, were you engaged immediately, or did or did it take you a while to get into it? No, exactly. Uh, as soon as the book starts, uh, I mean, in the first fifty pages, you have the severe harms. You have the first track of the first murderer that you think is uh, is the killer. So it's going. It's really fast paced, but at the same time, they are only giving you some little clues all along the book. So you don't get everything all at once. It's really just bit by bit. So that's really interesting because sometimes you have those thriller books where they will give you all the information all at once and you're overwhelmed by that. And already you know who's the, who the killer is and you know how it will end. But this one... You are always on the edge. You never really know. You're you're never really sure. Is it, it when when you say you know certain uh, you know thrill books you don't you know they tell you everything in the beginning? Is, are you referring to like books like you know uh, I, I I think you talk about like Agatha Christie, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes, you, you know everything right at the end. And I think th- this one with Donato Caristi is really interesting because the guy also. Um, is past actually he is a criminologist he was a jurist so he knows how this works he knows how mm. a criminal mind works and i think he used mm. a lot of his experience to produce such a great book such a realistic book 
which hey, hey it, 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 that's interesting what you just said because you say he's a criminologist and he writes about crimes right mm -hmm. like isn't it Like, do, do you, because you're a writer too, and, and do you use what you know also? I think, you know, there's, there's that saying to write what you know. Do you use that? I, I try, I try to. I mean, I have a past of, I have a degree in history, so I try to, um, to be kind of exact about what I write. If I try to write, uh, an historical book or something that is placed in past mm -hmm. years, I always try to, find something that will that we can relate to so for yeah. example in my book uh i describe a scene that there is a lot of it, it's in 1907 and there is some of my characters that are driving a car but they are going in a little village so i'm i'm pointing out that everyone is suspecting them because they all have a car and in 1907 no one had a car it was really rare mm. so i'm trying to put a parallel there to show that it was a different reality and in that book with the whisperer uh donato carissi is showing us a lot how the police the, the police work and our research actually for a, for a criminal work and how the criminal mind is and it's it's kind of terrifying so Hmm. <laughs> it's interesting okay. we cannot it, it's hard to talk about this book without revealing everything because mm -hmm. there is such a good uh ending to this book okay and so throughout the book how did you feel reading it was it is it something that you feel amused uh disturbed confused you know uh how, what's their overall feeling i was when disturbed you... definitely disturbed Okay, I like that. <laughs> that that was scary because it was not scary because it was gross. Of course, there was gross uh, scenes such as one of the guy that is eating his own wrist to kill Ooh. himself. <laughs> so there is one scene like that that is really, really disturbing. Um, but other way than that, they are playing with your mind because we are mm. we are talking about someone that whispers order that. But we don't know who this person is. And something that is really interesting and used all along this book, there is one quote actually that they keep using, is that God is silent and the devil whispers. Which hmm. in a way tells you that wow. the evil is always there to to try to take, in, take you on, on his side. Mm -hmm. And God is, is there waiting for you to show your faith and mm. to be strong and not get defeated by that and everything. But, I mean, a tree burns faster than it grows. <laughs> so mm. Wow. Hey, that's good. Exactly. So that's kind, that's a good that's kind of how it works in that book. They are always playing with your mind. And that's what was scaring me, actually, because I would be in my bed and I wasn't scared that someone will show up. I was just scared that someone was here, so so someone could put a, um, put put a thought in my head and tell me like do this, do that. You need to do this. Mm -hmm. A bit like a schizophrenic person. Uh, so that's why it's scary because it's really realistic. Hmm. So so the character is schizophrenic, like kind of. Well, all all the people they they find. Uh, All the suspects, actually, they find in the book looks a lot like schizophrenic people, but they're okay. not. Okay. They were okay. told some order by someone else, which you discover during the book. <laughs> um, how many main characters are there? Is there's, are, there are there two investigators the main characters? Um, there, there are the two, uh, the two major characters, which are, which are the two investigators plus the murderer. But then after that, you have many other invest investigators. So you have probably six, eight people around all the time, plus all the secondary characters, uh, which are uh, the possible murderer, the possible sus suspects. Um, but it's it's really easy to follow. And which what is interesting actually is that the author uh, you have since he is Italian, there are some Italian names, but He tried also to take some uh, more German name or French name so you can identify to each character. 
Um, and also there is no, uh, he's not, uh, exactly telling you where the, uh, the events are happening. So you, you kind of are able to actually, um, invent your own place where, where it's located. You don't know exactly where it is. You're kind of lost. Um, so yes, it, it's really interesting. It's hard, it's hard to explain actually how it mm-hmm. is. It's all right. Sorry. Um, what passages strike you as insightful, you know, even profound? I think you kind of, you, you said a few sentences there, but can you really name a passage like that struck you as insightful or maybe a dialogue that's funny or poignant or, you know, uh, that encapsulates a character? Well, um, Again, that that's at the end, actually, when when the the investigator uh, Mila Vasquez, when she meets with the actual responsible, the actual murderer, at the end they have a conversation of, on how he works because he's not. Again, that that's really hard telling you how <laughs> how this works without revealing what happened exactly in the book. But mm-hmm. she has this discussion with the murderer. And it's a bit like Annibal Lecter in Silence of the Lamb. Mm. Uh, you understand this criminal mind and you almost take his side and you understand. The, the criminal? You take the side of the criminal? At one point, yes. You understand why he did that mm. and what's happening and how he, he did that and the reasons and everything and um, how everyone is following orders of someone else higher and everything so this is this is creepy because there is always someone uh higher and as i said earlier they talk about how somehow evil is more widespread and seductive than the good actually and it's easier to be bad and follow those raw animal instincts Instead of being good, if you are given the opportunity to commit a crime, even a small one, a really, really mm-hmm. small one, human tends to do it. This is hmm. this is something really freaky because you realize okay. that. No, go ahead, go ahead. You, you realize that uh, in a way in real life. I mean, if you have. Let's say, for example, if you are at the restaurant and the waitress gives you your bill and you realize that she forgot to to charge a drink or anything, most of the people would just be like, well, it's her mistake. So I just I, I won't tell her that she made a mistake and I will just pay my bill and leave, actually, which is kind mm-hmm. of uh, scary because you're is it. Is, do you hear something? Uh, yes, now? exactly. That's my hope. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, it's all right. Sorry. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah. So, actually, most of the people won't tell the waitress that she made a, made a mistake. Some, mm-hmm. uh, some of us will, and we will be honest with ourselves, but most of the people will just leave and pay their bill out. It was uh, brought to them. Mm-hmm. So, and, and when you... When you take that higher, actually, how far can you go? If you if you think you uh, you won't be caught, and this mm. we are exploring okay. this actually in that book. Is it is it uh, okay? So because you mentioned that we take the side of the criminal, and I think that's very that's so cool. Um, and what do you learn about the motives to kill? You kind of you kind of flirted with it now, but you know how can you what is the, what is his motive to kill basically actually the motive to uh, to kill is to show uh, like i said it, it's really to show how far someone is able to okay it's how far okay. can you go to uh to realize something and he's always playing with the thoughts of everyone like do this and do that and if you don't this will happen so how far can you go to survive? To uh, will you obey mm-hmm. any orders okay. in order to survive? And this is this is uh, actually uh, really interesting it, in a way. So the theme of the of the book is what the main theme or the themes? 
the seams actually well there is this is a th- this is really hard <laughs> <laughs> is it murder uh, is it there, um... is, there is murder yes there is a philosophy actually and how to how to uh be resilient actually how to survive an event and not be affected with that which you learn with the main character Mila Vasquez because she um she had some really troubled past but she somehow managed to become this really really good profiler and she she uses her past actually to be a good profiler and so it's about resilience it's about murder it's about uh honesty um does, does, does the author use symbols to reinforce the main ideas? Not really, actually. This no. is this is really just the facts. This okay. is always okay. facts. All right. Um, talk to us about the book structure. Um, is it a, it is is it a continuous story or interlocking? You know, short stories if i can say i think it's a con- continuous story right yes exactly it's always a continuous story so you start and you're always uh going further and further so you're following the characters and it's almost like uh it's almost by minutes you see what happens okay so the t- uh, the timeline moves chronolo- chronologically or does it go back and forth between past and present it's mostly chrono- chronologically okay. uh, actually they will Maybe once or twice they will go back in time just to explain uh, the past of Mila Vasquez, but other way than that, it's really always in present. Okay. And does the author use like a single viewpoint or shifting viewpoints? Um, it's always the point of view of Mila Vasquez. We are. It's always okay. her. It's always from her point of view. So it's always uh, first person. First person, exactly. So they won't. They won't do a scene from one person to another. It's always from her point of view and her experience. Okay, okay. And why do you think the author have chosen to tell the story the way he did? You know, I mean, what difference does it make uh, in the way you read or understand the story? Hmm. Because you mentioned earlier that, you know, there's a difference between you know, uh, Agatha Christie and this type, this style. Exactly. Well, there is... It's a hard question. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I, mean, uh, I, mean, I mean, for you, okay, so what is the main, I mean, what does different really does it make, you know, the way you read that book and, and that style, you know, and and... And the way you understand it compared to an Agatha Christie, Agatha Christie style. I don't know if the question is clear. The way we'll do it, it's really, it's really linear. There are no, um, okay. it's, it's going straight to the point. So it's, it's really, how, how could I say it? It's, um, It builds. Yeah, I mean, it kind of builds it's, up, it's but just... always, um, each time. You... A... Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> each time you get some information, it gets a, a little bit more. Um, it tightens the story each time until oh. you can see just. I don't know if you can understand, but just a little hole, and yeah. and you look through that hole and you're like, okay, th- this is where I need to go. Th- this is there. So you start with a lot of information. Y- you are kind of lost, but the more it goes and the more uh, you are centered on one aspect of the book. Um, so it, it's just restrain the information just to uh, to get closer and closer mm-hmm. to uh, the, the right information and the good, the good track actually, the good, uh, the good murderer, the responsible yeah. of all those crimes. Um, so. Okay, so, so it's as if they, they, they kind of dangled, he, you know, he dangles a carrot, 
Then you get the carrot, and then it's like, oh, there's another carrot. That one wasn't, you know? Exactly, yes, exactly. So there is always one more carrot e each time, but at the end, you can, you can see it. It's just really, really far away, but you can see it. And this is the last one. This is the last one mm. you, you need to, to grab, and you're trying to run and run and run, and it's going further, but then after a while, it just stops, and so you can catch it. Uh, so mm. that's... That's really interesting because as soon as you think you will catch it, it goes away again. So <laughs> I love that. I, lo yes. I love those kind of story. I love it. I love <laughs> those. <laughs> um, oh, do, okay. So do the main characters uh, change by the end of the book? You know, do they grow? Do they mature? Um, especially for Mila. Uh, yes, exactly. She learns about herself because the murderer is actually pointing at her. So you learn a lot about her because he. So, sorry, so you said you're, he's pointing exactly. at her. Exactly. He wants to kill her. He's not trying to kill her, but he selected her. She was meant. To she what? was meant to be involved in that in that crime. She was uh, meant to be involved in all those research. It's almost like if she was chosen to do this, but by the murderer. So this is how far the murderer is able to go. Because she has, okay. uh, her path is somehow linked to what happens. And this is what you discover through the book. And at the end, the murderer is actually talking to her as if he knows her. Mm, and it leaves you at the end, uh, on the edge on about does she really know Sam? What happened between them? And then after that, you have more books from this author and the same character. <laughs> um, what does she learn about herself? Uh, she she learns, actually, she, she uses her past to discover, actually, one of the victims. Because it, it looks a lot like what she lived once. Because the, the character actually was kidnapped once, and it's... It's exactly the same thing that she lived. So she's using that information mm. and instead of shutting down her mind and being like, okay, I don't want to hear about it anymore. I don't want to know to uh, remember that past. Now she's opening about it. And instead of being always this uh, individualistic person that works always in soul, she learns how to work in team actually. And she opens about herself. Uh, she uh, she helps her team actually to find out the murderer by providing information about herself and how she lived that uh, that episode of her life actually. So she by opening herself, she's uh, yeah she she's basically just helping the team actually by by being okay. more open minded. Um, you, she's a female protagonist, and the man is an is a male. You know, the author mm -hmm. is a male. Um, the, is he so? Is really is he really um, you know uh, projecting the the female mind? You know, in a realistic manner. Do you you know? I think yes, and she's Mila Vasquez is actually a really strong character. She's really she has a lot of pride. A lot and lots and lots of pride. She's. Okay. Let, let me ask you this because okay, so is, is she does she does she have like male characteristics in the, in in the sense that like you say oh she has a, a lot of pride as if you know she has a big mm -hmm, ego kind exactly. of exactly exactly okay and, and and I'm curious as a woman how do you relate to that I think it was interesting she was not uh, she, because sometimes what you will see is that. The woman is weak and she's not as strong as a man and she absolutely needs a man. But now you see a character that is uh, really strong and she's wild and she trusts her instincts. Um, I think this is, this is the only point actually that, that could seem weak at one, at one point because she's, she learned how to trust her instinct and her teammates are always Uh, pointing out that you you cannot just trust your instinct. You need to follow the rules. You need to have facts. Uh, but she's like, no, uh, my guts is telling me that I need to go there. My guts is telling me to do this. 
So I will trust my instinct. You know, like this female, uh, female, um, instinct, intuition. Uh, intuition telling you that, yes, this is the right thing you need to do. This, you are on the right path. So I think this is mm-hmm. the only thing, uh, that sh- really shows her as a women, which is not, uh, which, not how women are like that, but this is the only aspect actually that he used to uh, to tell that she was a woman and that the men don't do it this way. We, uh, men won't use their instincts; they will just use uh, the facts and everything. But again, I, I think that she was uh, really described as a strong character instead. And if she would have been a man, there wouldn't have been any difference actually in the character she would have stayed the same so okay. i i don't think he's using the fact that she is a woman in, in the book she it's just that it happened okay i get it okay so but you as a as a female reader as a woman you you relate to it right you, you kind of see yourself in it i i think a lot of women see themselves in that kind of powerful you know female protagonist well you know. yeah kind of in a way since I mean, she she was one of the only women in the book, except the the victims. But yeah, she she was kind of real interesting because of her ego, and sometimes it gets in the way. So it's really a, I, I could really relate to that. Uh, but but yeah, she she was real interesting. She was showing you how to be resilient and how not to let your past affect you. So that was really interesting. I, it, it was a growing experience. Try to learn from this character, actually, how to be resilient. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. And is there a particular chapter that touched you? You know, besides the end, is there a particular chapter that you, you know, touched you in particular? Or is it just really until the end that, you know, things really uh, fascinated you, if I can say it that way? Well, it was really until the end because it's not really an introspective book uh it's not um it's a factual yeah, it's book it's more a factual book so it, you don't yeah. you don't get to be uh to have such an introspection so you're not mm-hmm. it it's not a book that that will be quotable if i may uh mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's okay. really a factual book that you will read and you will just enjoy the this is this is enjoyable, but there is no and, chapter that you can actually be like, oh my God, this this defines me. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And ha- has this novel changed you? I mean, has it, broadened your pers- your, has it broadened your perspective? You know, have you learned something new or have you been exposed to different ideas about people or, you know, a certain part of the world? Um, I've always been interested in human thinking. So that was mm. so interesting for someone that is Mm. always fascinated about how can someone think how can someone uh, do something this bad and this good and so that was really interesting for me to see that kind of that that point of view this murder point of view uh, when i hear you speak i feel that you know you're it's you're fascinated by how do human think it seems that the way you talk about the book um it's it's a lot about how someone can convince themselves of mm-hmm. something. Exactly, and this is this is absolutely fascinating. How yeah. you are not actually all in control of yourself. That someone can always override you, and this is scary. So, and this is something yeah. really interesting for a character because he's so. Uh, he, he's so always in the background is is never on the first row is always on on the background there is always someone behind you like the little angel and the little devil upon your shoulder it's a bit like that and i think that that the, the thing that is the most interesting and the most fascinating about this book how the human mind can work actually under pressure and under certain circum- circumstance mm-hmm. so yeah. mm-hmm. if you could ask the author one question what would you ask uh, <laughs> that will be uh, the author directly i would just ask him 
show me, <laughs> show me how to do it, how to write that way. Um, oh, okay. I always did it actually. I, I, as I said earlier, I think it's because of his past, his training and his experience. Uh, he learned a lot. And I learned that he was uh, before a screenwriter. So I think that might have uh, helped him a lot in writing his book because this was his first book, actually. So that's really impressive work for for first book. That was his first book, and you, you said he was a screenwriter? Exactly. So he was a criminologist, a jurist, and then he left all of that to start his writing uh, career as a screenwriter for almost 10 years. So the way the book is structured, probably that helped him a lot, because as a screenwriter, you always have to write another episode and kind of uh, uh, lengthen the story. It must be really long through all the episodes. You must keep... Uh, the viewers mm -hmm. all the time in the story and keep them on the edge. So I think that really helped him through this book. And I would love to learn from him how he did that and uh, how can he get in that criminal mind because this is what I'm trying to write. So. Mm -hmm. And ha have you read other books by the same author? And not yet, but I just order a bunch of them. <laughs> So I'm <laughs> waiting for those books to uh, to come in, uh, but yeah, I just ordered uh, three of these books, and I just okay. can't wait to discover more about this writer. How, how did you how did you discover him? Uh, I was just walking in the library. I'm kind of a book hoarder, so it's really hard for me to go in the library mm -hmm. without uh, purchasing any books. And I was in the trailer section. I wanted something that will uh, like this book, keep me on the edge and awake at night. I, I searched for a book of this jar, this jar, uh, for a long time. And I must say that at first I, I always judge a book by its cover when I, when I'm mm -hmm. looking for a new book. And the cover was fascinating. There is kind of this dirty little girls with big green eyes on it it was really uh really interesting and the name the whisperer uh mm -hmm. so i just decided to take it and give it a try and i just fell in love with it i have read it like three years ago i'm about to read it again uh as soon as my boyfriend is done because i i was finally able to convince him to start this book and he cannot put it put it down either so okay and uh, to whom would you recommend it? I'm sorry. To whom would you would you recommend the book? Uh, everyone who likes a good thriller, a good mystery book, uh, and that are looking to uh, to be surprised, and that don't like to know who is the murderer uh, right at the beginning. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's it's definitely not for the people that loves. I would say a Colombo or anything like that when you have the, the, the crime scene right at the beginning and you know who did it. I, you must be someone that likes to search and dig to find out what happened and okay. someone that their mind cannot just shut up. If, if your mind is always active and you are always looking for something that will keep it awake again, if you, this is really interesting. And, and do you have any negative as a fan? Is there something that you didn't uh, like or should have been improved? Or The only thing that was really negative about this book, and I read about some critiques about this as well, and that was really about the translation. This is, this okay. is a book from, that was written in Italian, and even the English version, I read that it was pretty bad. Uh, the French version was badly translated, but if you can overcome overcome uh, the, that that thing, actually, the, you will really really enjoy the book. But <laughs> except if you are able to read in Italian, uh, you need to <laughs> you need to deal with that even uh -huh. in English. Okay. Okay. Cool. Hey, um, hey, one, it's funny. It's funny that you, that you talked about uh, Colombo because today I was just thinking. How do you know Murder She Wrote? You know the series? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I I just grew up grew up on that when I was uh, a young. 
And because my girlfriend watches it all the yeah. time. Oh my God. I can't. Anyway, so, but it's, I, it's like Colombo, like you said, it's so, you know, uh, uh, systematic. Mm -hmm. Like it's so like everything is the same. Whereas Murder She Wrote, at least, you know, there's some twists and turns. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, so I, and anyway, I just want to say that because you talked about Colombo earlier and exactly. well, uh, thanks, Lorian. That's it. Great. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. Hey, uh, you know what? You, you, you give me, you give, you, you, um, influence me to pick it up. Really. Great. That, that's awesome. I'm sure you'll love, love, love that book. So, w which other one you, you're going to pick up from uh, him? From him, actually, I just purchased, um, because they are really easier to find in French, because in English, they are really, really hard mm. to find even on Amazon. So in French, okay, okay. I just got L'Ecorché and Le Tombeau des Armes, which is actually okay. the, the, the following. Actually, this is the, of, about this book, The Whisperer. This is with the same character, Mila Vasquez. And it, they all have this kind of religious thing to it, which is really interesting because human being always needs to believe in something and there is always <laughs> religion somewhere. Uh, in the history that that are kind of linked with crime, so that okay. that's really interesting. I can't wait to read them. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, it's cool that you write history. By the way, I just I don't know. It, it, and and you love history. You love uh, what, what part of history do you love the most? Um, what I love the most, actually, I would say. Um, Romans, no, medieval. Yeah, I times. I mean I had I had my. That, that varies, actually. Sometimes it will be Renaissance. Uh, sometimes it will be uh, the 19th century. I really love 19th century, actually. I'm fascinated really? with wow. Russian literature and like Tolstoy, Dostoevsky and everything. I love them. Uh, yeah. All the industrial revolution. I think that's really an interesting uh, era. But then also uh, sometimes I will just go back and read a lot about Greeks and Romans, mm. and then I will come back to medieval. So I love a lot of that mm. stuff. I, I I just love history. I did my degree in that, and if I could have worked in that field, uh, I would have. But uh, this is this is a really difficult field. So instead, I'm just trying to write about it. That's it for us for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you, Lorian. Thank you, Lorian, for doing this. I really appreciate good luck in your writing endeavors. And come back to us with even more fascinating books. All right, guys, if you want to connect, go now, frederickbay.com. Um, if you want to if you want to chat on Twitter at by Fred on Facebook just type in my name Frederick Bay and check out my YouTube channel The Book Geek until next time live with purpose passion and love